we bought like a shitload of cases of beer and just invited some friends over and, and they could bash the shit out of each other so it was fun yeah. times Marcus, thank you so much for taking some time. I know it's getting late in the evening already in Sweden. It's about nine o'clock, I assume, uh, as we're as we're talking. Um, yeah. You come across pretty chill. Uh, the album, the fourth album, is coming in about what, uh, a month or so from now, as we're talking. Um, yeah. So, how do you feel? Like, are you as calm as you appear, or has it just been a long day? You just need to need to calm down. Well, I am kind of calm. Because uh, I don't know what to expect really right now. So uh, yeah, I've been out with the fellows earlier, so uh, I'm kind of mellow. <laughs> so, <laughs> say no more. Uh, All right, uh, let's say no more. So yeah, uh, yeah we've been kind of good with the, the singles coming out. So uh, I think we got a good thing coming, and uh, should await some uh, reviews by the end of the week. So uh, I think it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. so you say something interesting. You say like, "Oh, I'm kind of calm because I don't know what's coming." Does that mean that your comfort zone is is really when you know you're not in control? Because uh, most people would uh, say like, "I'm calm when I know what's going to happen and I've got everything under control." But that sounds different for you. Then I want to be in control, of course. Like uh, I want to know when. I I don't expect you know I don't know what to expect really. Yeah, it, yeah, it could yeah. be uh, like uh, we get some good reviews, like obviously, and uh, uh, but nothing has come up that much about it. So uh, I'm I don't sure where what to expect really. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. Like I don't want to put my hopes up too much. Uh, <laughs> I know that we put out something great in yeah, my yeah. point of view, but uh, I'm not sure what the, the rest will think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've seen some reaction, obviously, already. You've released a couple of singles. You mentioned it, uh, a couple of yeah. music videos as well. From the Gone to Waste video, we now know that we should stay away from Swedish parking lots after dark. Because uh, apparently <laughs> it's sure. much more violent than we thought. Um, yeah. a, a fun to record that video for sure. But when you then see the comments, People are obviously commenting on the video itself, but also on the music, and that com those comments have been pretty, pretty positive. And mm. every artist will tell me that they don't read comments, but I also know that every artist does read comments. So I do, uh, I do. <laughs> so, so, so glad with with the reception of those uh, two singles so far. Uh, yeah, pretty good actually. Uh, it was real fun recording the first one. We got a. Uh, Pro wrestlers, Swedish pro wrestlers, yeah. uh, Bad Rose and Six joining us, and we invited a bunch of friends, doing like a fight club, uh, kind of fighting scene. So it's a, uh, we bought like a shitload of cases of beer and just invited some friends over, and and they could bash the shit out of each other. So it was fun yeah. times, and it, it received a lot of good um, reviews so far. So. Uh, Yeah, that was kind of a, like a more of a part, party vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, not the same with All Rise. It's yeah, more yeah. of a um, anti-war song and uh, what's going on in Ukraine and now Israel Palestine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more, more like a heavy topic to it, so it's kind of diver diverse the two of them. Now you mentioned it. You work with with uh, two pro wrestlers uh, in, in the video. Pro yeah. wrestling is whether or not people are a fan of it, but it's something cool. that a lot of people on the surface will look at as 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 uh, simple entertainment. But by working with these with these pro wrestlers, having them on your video, um, mm. I wouldn't be surprised that you've also seen that you know the dedication and the work and the hard work and. Um, you know that goes into those performances. Um, any any takeaways for you guys as a band? Because at the end of the day, you know, 
music is very similar. You want to put up a good show and want to have people have fun. But, mm. you know, the biggest party bands in the world, take the Steel Panthers of this world, <laughs> behind, yeah. behind the scenes are also the most professional people in the hardest Hard working, world. for sure. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, a lot of respect to to those two. Like, they they put on a show, like, every single night or every week when they, when they work. Um, like, we had a... Uh, maybe 30 40 friends coming over and as i said we bought a shitload of beers and everyone can come along and hang out and we invited those guys from from gotham earth they were pro wrestlers as i said so at first it was like all of us were standing in a sort of ring and just watching it and the first take when they sort of bash the shit out of each other at the end of the take, everybody was, "Wow!" Like, what the fuck have we just seen? It was, it was crazy. It was really, really good. Really, really professional. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it was, a, yeah, it was really, really good. And they, you can tell that they, they know exactly how to hear each other without getting hurt, and still put on a good show for the camera. They're super professional, both of them. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. awesome. Sometimes your guys are hard to classify. You bring a bit of a modern take on some, you know, established death metal influenced uh, genres. Some people call you death and roll. Um, some people call you just, you know, death metal, metalcore. I've even heard whatever. Um, there is a always a little bit of that glimmer of hope i feel of your music like there's 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 an uplifting side to it and we see that in some of the lyrics as well i mean slice of life is maybe the perfect example where i mean not that i'm not going to call you a motivational speaking uh, band or what have you but um there needs to be that glimmer of hope with leech uh i believe so actually um even even though the topics are as you said really tough sometimes it's it's always that sort of motivational kind of thing to it mm -hmm. i guess and uh, like anti uh, like going from from the bottom to, to the top basically kicking upwards yeah uh, being being the the anti-war of ukraine being the anti-war of israel palestine being the like always be in the underdog somehow and and kind of be motivational i guess yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's that's a strong thing even though like we've had depressions mental health issues within the band we've had drug issues as well so it's it's about speaking about those topics but in a in a positive way some somehow maybe not speaking in a positive way but having something positive come out of it i guess yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah for yeah. sure for sure mm. yeah uh, the the more personal songs i mean as mentioned like you do have songs about you know conflict you see in the world but the more emotional and personal songs fair to say then that with what you just said that you're not necessarily telling the audience that message but first and foremost yourselves this is this is to some extent a more introspective album than we might first think i believe so like uh we got, we got a few topics mainly about as i said me mental health uh, mm -hmm. and mental health issues and um without telling too much we, we we've had a fair share of like drug abuse as well so um it's more about telling the story, like where we come from, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe what kind of struggles we've we've been through, and making something positive out of it, I guess, and making the aggression come out of it, because it's obviously an aggressive album. Of course, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. for sure, for That's, sure, yeah. Um, like we have a a lot of melody and a lot of sometimes like i can feel like the the verses is kind of dark and at the bottom and then we come up in the in the choruses and have a 
kind of wider and more epic feel to it. Yeah, as yeah, in yeah, yeah. positive vibe, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can play with a lot of different bands. You have played with a lot of different bands and different genres. You could as easily go on the road with a death metal band and a hardcore band, right? Um, yeah. When you've played for different audience, I mean, you've supported different bigger acts and so on. Do you see different reactions from different crowds? Or at the end of the day, does your music kind of transcend those barriers? Um, I believe that. Like we did, we've done a bunch of tours in mm -hmm. the past, and uh, some were maybe not that of a good fit. Like um, not that you know, black metal. <laughs> we've done a black metal tour as well. But uh, yeah, as you said, we, we we're kind of in between genres. I think we're we call it thrash and roll because it, it's kind of a rock and roll vibe, but it's a yeah. thrash ground. Uh, obviously, from Sweden, we got a bunch of Swedish death metal, uh, melodic and not so. And we got up north a lot of hardcore going on, uh, Race Fist and Refused and whatnot. So I think we all, it's all uh, like it, it comes down to all of our influences. I love American thrash. That's where I come from, like Exodus, mm -hmm. Anthrax, stuff like that. And the hardcore right, like Agnostic Front. So kind of intervene those two and then bring uh, a bit of Swedish death metal to it. That's, that's, I think, yeah. And that being said, like, it's hard to put a label right now on us um, that might have been for the worst past, you know, being an upgrown band. But as, you know, the bigger we get, I think it's just a, a positive thing to it. Yeah, yeah. Like we can uh, appeal to a wider audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. In the future. And, and people will start to know your unique sound more and more. Um, I think so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you said it, hey, appeal to more audiences. Um, you already mentioned it. You've toured many times and with some really exciting, interesting bands, sometimes fantastic fit, maybe sometimes a little bit different, as you were saying. Um, this album's coming out soon, which means that you have still the majority of 2024 left to promote this album. So uh, to wrap us up a little bit, uh, you know, the people watching this, what uh, what can we expect from Leech for the remainder of the year? When are we going to see you play? Uh, in Europe. Uh, we got nothing planned in the U.S. for now, um, but in Europe we got a few festivals this summer, and uh, as we speak, we're uh, in the plans of a European tour, like September, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the great band that I love, but I, I don't think I can talk so much about it right now. But uh, no worries. No hopefully. worries. <laughs> All right. Well, Marcus, it sounds like we need to keep our eyes open for more announcements coming our way after the release of this album. And I wish mm -hmm. you guys the best of time releasing this album. It's always hectic and it's always exciting. Um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, I'll get to see you on a stage soon. If it's not within the next few months, I'm sure it won't take too long. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, Thank the you, best with the release, man. Thank you. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.